yeah, we were spoiled in the beginning with making the best Batman series. And when, when everyone heard they're making a Superman and they thought, oh, it's going to link up with the Batman thing. Yeah, I wish it did. Right. I really wish it did. What's up? And you are watching Beside the Point here on Nerdy Blurb TV. Today is a special episode because we have one of my favorite YouTubers, comic YouTuber, Comic Man Jake, here to talk to us today about the DC Extended Universe, the cinematic universe that DC and Warner Brothers has been giving us. We're going to just kind of talk about what we like, maybe some things that we don't necessarily like, and then we're going to just sum up everything to where... We want to talk about things that we want to see in that universe, maybe even some things that we want to fix. So stay with us. It's going to be great. Presented by None of This Really Matters, this is Beside the Point here on Nerdy Blurb TV. And today is really special because we've got our friend Comic Man Jake here with us. How you doing today, Jake? I'm doing good, Ryan. How you doing? Pretty good. Thanks so much. We've been meaning to have you on our show for a while now. You had me on your show. You have your own YouTube channel where you talk about uh, comic books and comics to movies and everything. Tell us a little bit about what you do over there. Sure. Uh, so I'm a huge comic movie guy, and I'm also a huge comic book guy. And the things that I love the most is when it keeps when certain movies or certain uh, things go to the source material, and for me, that's the comic movie equation. Most comic book that we uh, book movies that we see nowadays usually are have certain references to certain comics, and that's what the comic movie equation is that I do on my channel. I also do certain comic reviews, uh, and then Fridays are usually just something where it's something whatever I feel like doing on that time. So awesome, that's cool. I I'm a pretty loyal fan. I am like notified every time you get a video out. I love going to you to hear about because uh, there are some movies that I didn't know that were based upon comic books, and I feel like you break it down really, really well. So if any of you uh, watching or listening to this episode uh, today and you don't know who Comic Man Jake is, go over to his channel and check out his comic to movie equations, his comic book reviews, or just anything in between because he's got it all over there and he knows his stuff. So again, thank you so much for being on today. Today, I mean, you and I, we've talked many different times and we wanted to have today be about uh, the DC Extended Universe or Worlds of DC. I don't know what they're calling that anymore. Well, DC, yeah. Right. I, I, I still, I personally like the DC EU, the DC Extended Universe. So I'm gonna just stick to that. I think. <laughs> so uh, let's talk about a little bit about that. You have brought that up to me, saying we should do- talk about that and the movies that are in there, what Warner Brothers and DC is doing. And I thought that was really interesting because I have a lot of opinions when it comes to that. Uh, but let's start off with all the positive ones first. Uh, mainly about like, uh, especially with you doing all of your YouTube stuff, how, how are they doing, uh, DC that is, how are they doing when it comes to keeping to their source material, you feel like? Well, some, some of the movies right now, if you take certain aspects of it, they're doing great. But like Zack Snyder, he's not my favorite kind of favorite director so he had a vision but it was a i feel like a rushed uh vision like he wanted to do the equivalent of you know for the marvel side let's say he wanted to do iron man then cap then civil war then you know (laughs) everything then everything else which really did you know that, that doesn't really work and but like as, as far as keeping to the source materials, they've been doing a pretty good job. Like, the closest one I have to say that was actually pretty close to it was actually Batman versus Superman. Not many people know. Like, if you take Frank Miller's Batman The Dark Knight Returns uh, and the little bit of Death of Superman, that's you read both of them. I mean, heck, that's that's the whole movie, basically. So DC does a good job doing it. It's just 
the actors and the direction is kind of the thing that's not going right. Right. I remember. So uh, those of you who are not familiar with Comic Man Jake's work, he actually covers that movie really, really well when in his comic, The Movie Equation. Go check out that video when you're done here. I really like that you, you bring it because there's a lot of movies that DC does or just any like movies in general that deals with comic books. They, they pull from a lot of different comic books that I've noticed, especially listening to your uh, YouTube material and, and like the research that you do there. It's really cool to see that they bring them all together, but sometimes they don't really work for me. And <laughs> and even though even though I'm I'm not like the most well versed when it comes to the comic books, I feel like what I have read so far is that they're doing a pretty good job. Like I that's one thing that I feel like Marvel or uh, DC can say over Marvel. I feel like Marvel has taken a lot of liberties, but that's probably because Marvel. I don't know. Maybe I'll get some heat for saying this. Marvel, when it comes to their source material, it's second seat to DC. All of DC's comic books, I feel like, are like number one, and then there's Marvel. That's just my opinion. I don't know. You've got you've got a lot of big hitters when it comes to DC, like Batman, Wonder Woman, Superman. You know what I mean? So I do like that about what DC's doing is that they're they're trying to keep true to what. Uh, like the fans want at, at least when it comes to the source material so we can say that uh i mean i think it's pretty obvious as well like the things when it, like the positive things that we can say about uh the worlds of dc the dce the dceu is that wonder woman was a pretty awesome movie i mean would you agree to that at all Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and I'm trying to actually find that's the one comic book equation I haven't done yet because I'm still trying to find the source material on it. But like the thing that they did right about that as a as and this is the movie side is the director fought like for those who don't know, like WB was about to or whatever. Who, they were trying to cut that no man's land scene. And it's Patty Jenkins, right? Was director. Right. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, she fought for that saying, like, no, you need to keep that in there. You need really? to keep that scene in there. That's and so like, crazy because that's, like, everyone the best knows, part. That's the best scene. Yeah. Yeah. That's one of the best scenes. That's crazy. Why so. do you think they would they, they would do that? Would uh, the executives and producers do something like that? They don't think it's necessary? I don't know because that's another thing. If you guys watch, like, the Bat – I'm going to go on Batman vs. Superman again. Like, Batman vs. Superman in the theaters was – choppy it was blocky it was plot had a lot of plot holes but then they came out when it when it was released they came out with an ultimate edition which included like another hour to it but like it it was like the un you know cut like everything was in there and i looked at this and i was like and everyone says it says it why didn't you put this in the theater you would have like this made so much sense to explain so m it made superman stop looking like a dick i'm sorry but he looked <laughs> he looked like a complete jerk in the whole movie and i was like that's not superman though like he genuinely cares right and if you re watch this ultimate edition it's like hey there was a reason why he didn't know about the bomb there was a reason why he didn't do this there was a reason why and it's like oh why did you cut that <laughs> And it's Warner Brothers. So, and that's why there's that huge fight now for the the whole rally for the whole, like, release the Snyder Cut of, you know, of Justice League, which I don't think there really is a Snyder Cut. I mean, Neither do I. I think that's a, a pretty big rumor. Or at least that's pe that's fans w hoping that there's, there's something that can save that movie. We'll get to that movie here in a minute. We'll talk about the things that we think are really, really sucky. Uh, but right now, let's try and scrape the bottom of the barrel and try and think of some things that we actually really do like. When it comes to DC, like, honestly, I am I am just not a fan of their movies at all. But I, I do like what may be happening in the future. I in, in Justice League, I thought Jason Momoa was, like, perfect for Aquaman. I think he's the best choice ever. And for the new movie coming out in December, I mean, you've probably seen the trailers. They look awesome, and I'm really excited for that. Like, crazy excited. Well, how, what are your thoughts on that? 
I think actually uh, that's going to be good because like they're looking like that one. They're looking like they're going to be taking a lot from Jeff Johns' run, which is an, another like just great comic. And I and the whole like if you saw the newest trailer where they have his classic costume on, I was like, finally, finally. I mean, just yes, yes. And Momoa is yes. When he, and Justice League, uh, he blew me away. Him, him, and Cyborg were the two guys that kind of were like, I want to know more about them. Which was surprising because it's like a lot of times uh, people don't know that Cyborg really wasn't a part of the Justice League until New 52. He was always a part of the Teen Titans and then just randomly he was a part of the Justice League. And I think it was for diversity reasons. I, I, I don't, don't know. know. <laughs> sure, don't quote me on that. But, but I mean, yeah, I'm really excited for that. But the one I'm really excited for is Shazam. Yes. I'm a huge Shazam fan. I love the guy and the guy who's playing it is perfect zachary levi is one of my favorites if you've ever seen the series chuck uh he like plays basically a nerd he plays a kid a little kid basically he's a little kid like he, just an adult and it's but ah uh, and the fact that like the trailer had all the source materials from another comic was just like this is gonna be good <laughs> i That's so I'm familiar with with uh, with the actor. Remind me his name again. Zachary Levi. Is that correct? I believe that's how you pronounce it. Or I'm not Levy sure. Or but the only <laughs> way I don't really know him very well because I didn't really watch Chuck. I I recognized him from Chuck. But funnily enough, I actually know him from Sesame, Sesame Street, where he actually what? yeah he plays a superhero in in Sesame Street. Look it up. He is the kindness kid. He teaches everybody how to be how to fight bad situations with kindness on sesame street and so when i saw the 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 trailer the first trailer i was like that's the kindness kid from sesame street not not because i grew up with that it's 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 relatively new but like watching with my very very young daughter like it like that's very much grained in my mind because that episode is on repeat all the freaking time so when i saw that i was pretty excited because i recognized it. it took me a while it took me a while to figure out who he was at first but then like watching it a few times I, I realized he's the kindness kid. So go check that out. It's really awesome. It's a great episode. But uh, yeah, I mean, this is this is one thing, and I'm not getting off topic here because they, they come together. I, there's another thing that I really enjoyed, and I feel like a lot of people are not on board with me about this, is uh, what DC has been doing is taking everything a lot darker. And I really appreciated that because I thought – because that's, that's what comic books are. I mean they, they really are – I mean they can be both. But like it's great to see two different sides, one on Marvel and then the, the other on DC. And it's, it was a really darker feel. It was gritty and it was it, – it made sense because Batman deals with darker stuff. And to see Superman have to be confronted with darker stuff was – it felt fresh. It not not that doesn't it didn't nail it for me, but I I was liking it. But with Shazam and with Aquaman, it looks like they're taking a different route. I'd hate for I'd hate for them to throw out the dark stuff altogether, though, because I was I was hoping that they would nail it one of these days. Well, I mean they can't. I mean. DC has always been known to be a little gritty and a little dark. I mean, the new Titan show that just came out, man, I was not expecting it to be that dark. It's, 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 whoa. But like, apparently they, from what Jeff Don said, it was, it's supposed to be dark. So they have somewhere to grow. So they, you know, go towards the light. And that's what I thought that was an interesting concept, but like, uh, Shazam has always been like it's always a jokey, fun comic guy. He, you know, it's it's a little for those who don't know. Shazam is a little kid who gets this power of I think it's like it, Shazam stands for like Solomon, Achilles, Zeus, something and something A and M something I can't remember, but it's all these like powers, and like it's this little kid who has who is you know who just shouts the word shazam and becomes an adult or what he envisions as his dad actually it's kind of cool no one ever knew that but when he shouts shazam and he becomes that adult it's not him as an adult it's him envisioning what his father used to be and uh so it's supposed to be this kind of funny 
kid, you know, kitty humor th thing. Like Aquaman, on the other hand, Aquaman can get dark. It can get dark. Oh yeah. But he's also that that character that everyone says, oh, he talks to fish. I mean, he's not that important. Mm -hmm. and, and and Jeff Ron John, if Jeff Johns run, he references it like the whole like the fans making fun of that and you know and making him actually more of a cool character and so there's there's gonna be a little bit of darkness in it mainly with his brother and his you know the whole fight of the kingdom but i mean you have to have a little bit of humor in it to you know spice it up a bit so right I, right i'm i mean i'm not against the humor or anything it's just that i really enjoyed the 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 direction that DC was going. I mean, they, they took it dark enough to even make a Suicide Squad movie, which is essentially bad guys are the heroes. And and when that first trailer dropped, I was so excited for that movie. Not super cool on the movie itself. I, <laughs> I love the trailer, but like I like the direction of that because it's it, it, it was something new. That's the thing is that it was it was something new we weren't i mean marvel wasn't really giving us any of that i'm correct me if i'm wrong it's just been all a bunch of heroes the darkest that marvel i feel like ever went i mean if I, we're not really counting uh deadpool or anything but like even that's not even as dark as it it could be it's pretty light in itself the darkest they went was like civil war where it was friends fighting friends and and that's that's it you know like when when it comes to like Suicide Squad, these are like bad guys. These are murderers, like becoming the heroes, and they give it that gritty gritty feel to it. I was excited to see that. Now I'm not the the biggest fan of the the film itself. I'm not a fan of them doing a second one, which we will talk about later. It's just that I would like to see this dark universe work, and so that's one thing that I can say that I do like that DC has been going for like a darker feel is it going to last I don't know I don't think it will because of the new direction that we see going on so with all of that aside when it comes to the things that we do like like let's talk about the things that we don't like because I feel like that's really what we've been talking about mostly I've been trying to scrape <laughs> the bottom of the barrel to find the things that I do like because there's not a lot of things that I do like when it comes to the DC extended universe so like honestly what are your feelings about just like the direction that they what that that what we have right now with the the DC cinematic universe how do you feel about it well like Darkness is good, and Zack Snyder was known for his, like, realistic approach. Like, if yes. Superman was in the real world, this is what would... It, we, we wouldn't be like, hey, look at the sky! We'd be like, what the heck is going on? <laughs> no, um... But, I mean... That approach didn't work, I didn't think, because everyone started complaining, saying, you know, he's not the same Superman that we all see... And that's what everyone was expecting was a cheery, go-lucky Superman, and that didn't really work. I mean, and then the Batman versus Superman, no one, again, knew the source material, so everyone was like, Batman doesn't kill, Batman doesn't do this, Batman, it's like, uh, again. And, it, like, you gotta, for, for me, the DC needed to make it so relatable so that you didn't have to know the source material, and that's what right. Marvel does, right? You, you don't have to know the source material to know the characters and or to grow with the characters. Um, and DC kind of just rushed it. They were just like, hey, Marvel's doing this. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Right. And that's what I felt was kind of just, if they would have slowed down, it would have been better. But they, they rushed, and now they're kind of, paying the price and they're like well we're gonna start doing this start doing this and see what happens suicide squad don't even get me talking about suicide squad <laughs> <laughs> like I'm, I'm glad i got to see that for free <laughs> oh good it, yeah the thing I is was, I, the the thing is is that the the things that are been that have been taken from suicide squad are the things that the annoy me the most about the dc extended universe and it's it's just one thing and that it's harley quinn 
Is she cool? Yeah, that's great. But like freaking everyone is dressing up like her. Every girl I see at a at a comic convention, at Halloween or whatever, they're all dressing up as her. And I was like, I liked Harley Quinn way before she had this like slutty look to her, and she was cool. And I'm I'm not dissing on Margot Robbie's like portrayal on her, but it's like that's the only thing that seemed to stick with that movie. Like nobody liked Jared Leto's Joker. Nobody like nobody was talking about Will Smith after that movie. The thing is, I think you can sum up everything that the DC Extended Universe is in the two things that were shown in Suicide Squad. Uh, and one of them is Batman's appearance. Batman was in that movie, right? And mm-hmm. so was The Flash. Like, the first time we ever see The Flash. And I, I remember seeing... Uh, what, mo- what movie was it? Uh, Thor Dark World. Remember that one, the second Thor movie? Mm-hmm. So when, when we saw Suicide Squad... Uh, and they showed uh, Flash in there. Nobody knew who he was. And it, we're talking about the Flash. Like, everyone in the movie theater was like, is that Flash? Like, even my my friends who are well, like, even better versed in DC lore than me were like, was that supposed to be the Flash? Like, the first glimpse. I mean, after a couple <laughs> seconds, you get it. But, like, the first initial reaction was like, who the freak is this, you know? But in Thor The Dark World, Loki turns into Captain America, and freaking everyone in the movie theater lost their mind. Like, everybody was cheering in the movie theater when that happened. And that just goes to show that, like, DC was not willing to put in the time or effort to, like, develop these characters. They were just so impatient. Like you said, they're like, we need to catch up to what Marvel's doing. And as a dc fan yourself like would you have appreciated it more if they taken the time or would you have rather them rushed everything and let's say that they got it right would you have wanted it quicker and faster or would you want one would you have wanted it over time uh, and more finite well personally i mean over time and finite of course i mean you want the you want the characters you you want to develop feelings towards the characters you want to feel for the characters and like Zack Snyder really didn't do that he was he was he was all go 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 like the minute you kind of tried to feel for something like it would immediately cut to a different scene that was kind of like okay uh, I was feeling something but now I'm kind of distracted with something else um it was very like I really do wish they would like sit down and do a Superman movie, and like they did a good job with Batman vs Superman with with like linking up like that first ish, the first part where like Bruce Wayne is you know the first time it's if you match them up, there's there's a bunch of videos where you match up the fight scene on Zod and like the intro of the Batman vs Superman, and it links up like perfectly, like absolutely perfectly, like the plane coming down when he's you know all the like, gravitational full and like everything. You know when the beams hit, it was in Bruce Wayne's building, and it's like it's it it links up perfectly with that. That was cool, but like that was again a, a rushed. You know, hey, he was here, cool. But I still want to know more about Batman. I get mm-hmm. it. He hates Kryptonians for that reason because he's his company got killed and a lot of people died. Cool. That still doesn't explain a lot. Right, right, and, and like. I can't even say that I enjoyed, like, the Man of Steel movie. I will oh, say I... that that's probably one of my more favorite DC movies. Like, I own it. That's about it. And, like, I've never seen it again. But, like, that just because Henry Cavill. By the way, that's probably one thing that I will say that I absolutely love about the DCEU. Is that he's the perfect Superman. He really is the best choice. In my opinion, so far... His portrayal that Zack Snyder, like you yourself had said, so far his dark and like dick kind of attitude it is not what I'm like like digging. But I I honestly feel like he is that uh, good American boy who is is down for justice, truth and justice in the American way, right? I think even though ironically he's British, but like I think Henry Cavill is like a great choice. But having said that, 
I feel like with the Man of Steel, it was just so bland, and it started off on such a weird footing, and I feel like Zack Snyder is the main problem for all of that. Like, I am not a fan of Zack Snyder, and I will get heat on that because I know that there's tons of people who love him because of what he did in 300 and 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 many other movies. I I do love Sin City. That movie was freaking amazing. But like he he focuses way more on like moments in movies. Like he'll slow things down like super super fast get just to get like a uh the cape fluttering in the background. He'll focus on that way more than like the story. Like why it's important that that Superman is the way he is anyway. And, and that's, like, that's what killed it for me. Like, the way that Zack Snyder, like, portrayed all of that, I was not a fan of. And and you may you may disagree with me or not, but the thing is is that you and I can both agree on the fact that, like, we just don't really like how rushed in all of this stuff is. Like, I mean, what are your thoughts? Do you have any other thoughts on that matter? Well, I mean, I agree with you that I believe Henry Cavill is actually one of the best Superman actors portrayed i mean the guy the one thing i thought was really cool about him the one fact that a lot of people don't know is like he didn't take any steroids like most people get jacked up and all that like he, he, like hugh jackman steroids everyone you know he didn't do that because and he said it in an interview i think he said like the reason why i didn't do it is because i didn't want to taint the image of superman that's that's wow, that's cool. kind of and i thought that was kind of an interesting concept yeah. but like Zack snyder yeah he's he, you you got his signature Every, every director has a signature thing they do in their movies. For, like, J.J. Abrams, it's, it's lens flares. It's, <laughs> for Zack Snyder, it's slow motion. It's uh, for... Oh, there's other ones I can think of. Yeah. But, like, those are the two, like, I can say that have that moment. And Zack Snyder, you're right. Like, he... I didn't even think about it at first, because that was the first movie I thought, like, well, he didn't do too much of that, but I did remember slow motion on the flutter of his cape and all that. I'm like, oh, he did do that crap. Because <laughs> I, I know, like Christopher Nolan was producing it, and I think he told him like no slow mo. Yeah, I mean, you know, and 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 I thought that let's talk a little bit about Christopher Nolan for a second. Uh, him producing Man of Steel, uh, I was actually like super hopeful for that movie. So when I saw it coming out in theaters, I was I was like super excited because Christopher Nolan's his seal of approval is going to be on this movie, and so like I was. I was down for that, but I didn't like the movie. No big deal. It doesn't that that I don't have to like all of Christopher Nolan's movies that he's ever made. Do I? Yes, I actually love every <laughs> single one that he's ever made, and they're some of my absolute favorites. But let's talk about Christopher Nolan and how, in my opinion, he has ruined DC for everyone. Why? Because he made the perfect Batman movies. Yeah ever and he spoiled us nothing will ever in my opinion nothing will ever like be closer to that when it comes to the dc universe like nothing can compete with it at all and so maybe that's what the problem is maybe we just got super spoiled from the get-go even before like they wanted to create the universe that christopher nolan like created the perfect batman so i mean like I haven't asked your opinion on this. Do you like Christopher Nolan's Batman movies? I love Christopher Nolan in general. You can yeah, yeah, I okay, agree right. fully on you that thing. It's like he is any movie he makes like is just like amazing. And 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 yeah, I do. I didn't think about it that way, but yeah, I, I that's 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 right. I mean, Christopher Nolan did really spoil us with making a fantastic Batman series. I mean, making Batman Begins and then the the, the amazing Dark Knight and then. The Dark Knight Returns? Dark Knight Rises. Rises, thank you. Dark Knight Rises, yep. And, like, he did a fantastic job with with, writing and directing and knowing. And, like, that was another thing, too, I agree with you. When I heard he was producing it, I was like, oh, awesome. He's going to do great on it. Wait, he's not directing? Who cares? It's Christopher Nolan. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. um, But, and then uh, he did, like executive produce batman versus superman interesting and then yeah justice league i don't think he did anything with it <laughs> yeah because afterwards I think saw it, he was like it's now oh, guys 
But I mean, yeah, I agree with you on that. That yeah, we were spoiled in the beginning with making the best Batman series, and when when everyone heard they're making a Superman, and they thought, oh, it's gonna link up with the Batman thing. Yeah, I wish it did. Right. I really wish it did. Right. Right. But you know, it's it, those three movies are great in itself, and I think if we brought the Superman over there, it might have not. It may have not actually like worked. We don't know. It might have. It might have not. But I mean, we'll never know. Right. I when uh when the rumors. I think it was when Dark Knight first came out. That's when all the rumors were coming out about DC, like maybe possibly making a whole other Batman franchise. Like like as soon as Nolan is done with this, they're they're gonna like hire somebody else to be batman and do a whole other thing because the rumor was they're going to try and keep up with with what marvel's doing and like yeah probably, what was that i, I thought it was to be jordan gordon levitt like that's what they heavily hinted at yeah i didn't i didn't know if that was going to be the case or not but that was that was even before dark knight rises had even came out it was it was the same time that dark knight uh with the joker oh came out and the rumor started flying and i was like that sounds like an absolute disaster already because because <laughs> you know me and from what from my content on my channel and on on from my podcast and everything you know that I I am not a fan of sequels. I feel like they're just overdone and there's way too many of them and before you know it your favorite franchise is ruined because 3 movies ago they took it in a weird direction. I think it's okay to say that we're done here. Like I f- I feel like Nolan did the perfect job. He made 3 movies and he was out. And then the studio can do whatever they want with it. And that's fine because my version my version of Batman will never be tainted because of what Nolan did. Do I like Ben Affleck as Batman? No, I do not. I do not like the new Batman at all. But that doesn't mean that it's ruined for me because they knew when to stop when it came to a run, like when it comes to like those movies. And I really appreciated that. But like for them to not even be done with the Dark Knight universe or the Dark Knight franchise, whatever we want to call it, for them to not even be done with it, like and planning something completely different like felt way too rushed to me i mean a back back to the whole rush thing i just feel like they didn't think it through and i i feel like one of the best movies that shows that is justice league and we were bound to talk about this movie sooner or later and justice league oh, is the worst the the best example as of a worst movie in in a universe what what did they do wrong? Like, t- tell me what, what in your in your opinion, what did they do wrong? Because we know it's wrong. So how did they do it wrong? <laughs> um, <laughs> what did they do wrong? Okay, so for people, I watched Justice League once in theaters, and I watched it with my friend uh, Professor Marks, uh, and we were both like, "Well, that failed." <laughs> and and then I watched it again. I was like, well, maybe there was something I liked about it. So I watched it again on the DVD. And at the first part, I'm like, actually, this isn't that bad. And then we got to the ending where you could definitely tell that the director has switched and it was completely different. And I was like, nope, it sucks. Because <laughs> that was their problem. You had you had two different directors. You had Zack Snyder who had to leave during it because of, um, I think his kid died, committed suicide or something like that. I am not sure about that, but I know that it was serious. Yeah, and then and then Josh Whedon picked it up, and I was like, and then they like then they're like, oh, there's all reshoots, and as, as soon as I heard reshoots, I'm like, okay, yeah, this is gonna go sign. two ways. Either it's gonna go really good and it's gonna save the thing, or it's gonna crash and burn. And then like the new trailers came out, and it's like, wait, that trailer had that same trailer. The new trailer just had that one scene. And in the odd scene, <laughs> the sky was black, but this side it's red. It's like, oh shoot! <laughs> See, like, and, and I think that's what they really screwed up yeah. on is like they, they 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 didn't find the director that was really like that could continue Snyder's vision, and that's why that whole release of Snyder Cut came out because there was a lot more that apparently Zack Snyder was going to do with that, and I mean, but like. 
putting a dark thing and then trying to make it really happy. Like the one thing that got me, man, and Professor Marks agrees with me with this, is that people can make jokes. Like they made jokes, you know, all the characters at one point had like a one-liner. Like Superman can make a one-liner. Perfect. Flash, perfect. Wonder Woman, perfect. Batman, no. <laughs> no. No, thank Dude, you. He, he, doesn't make, he doesn't make happy jokes. He's depressed. He makes dry humor. And like, it was just... Oh. oh that's like the number one thing that bothered me the most about that movie like i first off love batman comic books love batman cartoons love the justice league co- and cartoons probably the most and batman is one constant like constant depressed guy the entire time especially in the justice league co- and cartoons like everyone knows him as the the dark brooding depressed mysterious man and for him to make stupid one-liner dad jokes even worse than dad jokes was just like so out of character and i and it's sad to see because you know that's joss whedon you know that that's his style that's just like his feel on things and it's sad to say that he got it wrong the funny thing is is that i can't believe that they even chose joss whedon to begin with not because he's a bad director in fact i think he's an an amazing writer and director but like talk about two completely different directors Zack snyder and joss whedon that's kind of like that's kind of like putting steven spielberg and the guy who directed like a freaking american pie or whatever you know it's like it doesn't make sense like i don't know why and the only thing that comes to my mind is that like with all the happiness the happy jokes and uh I don't know, like, the feel that they were trying to go for in that movie really felt like Marvel. And that's probably because, yeah, is Joss Whedon, because Joss Whedon had, if anyone doesn't know, Joss Whedon has done the two, the first two Avengers movies, and he did a great job with that. It was light, it was funny, but, like, it's so weird. Out of all the directors, they chose him, and it just makes me feel like, is DC just trying to be like Marvel so much that they hire the same people to like try and ex- execute that stuff? So it's like maybe maybe I mean I'm not in the movie producing I'm not there at Warner Brothers. I don't know what's going down, but like like as a fan looking outside, uh looking in from the outside, like how do, how do you feel like that's going do you feel like they're trying to keep up with marvel like to a t like even so much that they're they're going out of their way to like make it kind of feel like a marvel franchise um i feel like when they were doing them things they were trying to play catch up i do believe that i feel like they were trying to play catch up because marvel at that time was like knocking things out of the park warner brothers is like hey we got dc let's start making movies okay Zack Snyder, here you go. You did great with 300. You did great with Sin City. I mean, and Sin City is actually a comic, I believe, right. by Frank Miller. Um, and 300, I think, at one point was a comic. Yes, it was. And, and Two movies like, that I request that you do a comic to movie equation, by the way. I got to I got to I got to I got to <laughs> I got to get the time to get those. Um, okay, sorry to cut you but, off. But uh they uh to me, when I saw that and I heard that, I was like, he, eh, superhero, I mean, he's got to make it work. And, like, right now, Warner Brothers has done a lot of shakeups. Like, they changed the president of the, I think it's the president of Warner Brothers is now different. It's, uh, you know, a guy who knows how to link, who knows how to make, like, universal movies, kind of, like, link movies. Uh, Jeff Johns, one of my favorite writers, for comic, he was in charge of it. He stepped down now to actually uh, do his own producing company so he could produce uh, the new like Green Lantern movie that's coming out, which is great because he's writing it. He wrote all the Green Lanterns. He made the whole Green Lantern, so who better to, to write and direct it than the guy who made it popular for 10 years, who still made this thing popular. But um, with Warner Brothers at that time, they really were trying, I, I believe, yeah, they were trying to copy Marvel. Like They were trying to play catch-up I mean, not so much as they were like, well, Josh Whedon's there. I mean, I think Josh Whedon was like an assistant director at the time, I, if I remember correctly. Like, when he was, he was helping out Snyder, 
But like, and again, it was all Snyder's decision at the end. And then when he left and they put him on there, he was like, okay, I got a completely different vision. Right. And that's when it got, yeah. He was in there. He was he was one of the executive producers before they even started filming. So that like that's on record. So like like pre production, he was on the list. So like it it wasn't like and I have my own theories about why Zack Snyder left, or in my theory, that that Warner Brothers got rid of him. Yes, there was, I'm sure, family drama going on with Zack Snyder, but I felt like Warner Brothers saw it as a... Because, like, honestly, us as fans of the Justice League, like, we we could have waited a couple more months, right? Like, like I get that that's, like, a huge push for them to do, like, a Justice League movie, but, like, we would have understood... Like, like, oh, Zack Snyder's, like, daughter is in trouble when it comes to her health or whatever it is. Let's... She, she, she I'm going to clarify. I just looked. She did commit suicide. That's okay. what happened. Her daughter, his daughter committed suicide. And, and that's you why never want to hear that. That's really sad. And my, my condolences to him and his family. But, like, the thing is, is that us as fans, we would have understood that. Like, if, if they would have been, like, to honor Zack Snyder's... Even if even if I'm not a fan of Zack Snyder, I would have been like, yeah, like to honor his daughter. Yeah, like push it back a little bit. We can wait as fans. But like that's not what they did. In fact, like they it felt like Warner Brothers was so ready to get rid of him. Like and, and like that's so sad to hear because he has to deal with that while he has to deal with his daughter's suicide. No father wants to do that. So that like that's messed up. And so like all in all, I just feel like, and don't even get me started on like their PR system, and like when it comes, <laughs> like all in all, when it comes to the Warner Brothers, they just are not doing a good job. They're not organized. They're not. They're just. They're relying upon other people's like jokes, and and when it comes to them announcing everything, when it comes to their PR stuff, when they announce new movies or rumors of anything, they don't like. Marvel's doing a great job by announcing it to their fans. Like friggin' Warner Brothers will send out like a mysterious tweet just and and hopefully everybody finds out through that. And it's really annoying. Like, not because I have to be on top of the news. It's just like it makes it really confusing, especially when it comes down to like, hey, is Henry Cavill like fired now? Like, nobody like officially came out and said anything for the longest time. And you remember that. Like, everybody freaked out and nobody knew what was going on. I feel like they just suck. Like, Warner Brothers has just sucked when it comes to, like, their <laughs> PR stuff. So why is it that DC movies have been so bad as of lately? Simple. I feel like these guys who they're giving the power to do the movies, except for maybe a couple such as Patty Jenkins, they just, I don't feel like they've ever picked up a comic book in their lives. Like seriously, Zack Snyder, not everything is 300, not everything is Watchmen. Do you know Superman? Do you know the characters? I don't think so. And then you have hope with certain movies coming out, such as Aquaman, which looks amazing. The new Wonder Woman looks amazing as well, so it looks like they did the research. Like, if you want to make a good Superman movie, you need to know Superman. You need to, if you want to make a good Batman movie, you need to know Batman can't make a movie about them if you don't know the character so if you want to make it better read your comic books just like we do i bet you we could do a way better superman movie or batman movie than all of the directors out there true story they're relying upon like they're relying upon other people's success too and the other thing i wanted to talk about uh within the same realm of dc trying to copy marvel is that suicide squad 2 is going to be coming out and being directed by James Gunn. And if you could, fill us in, fill fill anybody in. Uh, if they don't know who James Gunn is, could you fill them in for us? Just to clarify. Yeah. So, for everyone who don't know, James Gunn did the coolest thing with Marvel, which he made Guardians of the Galaxy, which is like a... It's not that top-selling of a comic, but he made it a movie that we actually cared about an actual group of characters that we 
actually cared about. And he did a great job with Volume 1 and Volume 2. There was supposed to be a Volume 3, and then some drama with uh, his tweets about 10 years ago, and all this other drama, and about pedophilia, and all that. It's kind of weird, but I look at that now and I go, well, that was kind of 10 years ago. I mean, 10 years ago, I was kind of, you know, we were all different people 10 years ago. It's, right. it's, did he grow up from that now? But like, then Disney fired him. Like, I think it was like before, like he was going to be like announcing like Guardians 3 or something. Cause he was supposed to, like, before I heard like he was supposed to have a panel and then he got fired and then they had to cancel yeah. the panel. Yeah, that's what I heard as well. And now he's, he's picking up, like you said, he's doing, he's writing right now. We know he's writing yes. Suicide Squad. He's rumored to be directing. And the rumor is actually that there, it's going to be, the nice thing about Suicide Squad, so a little tangent, the nice thing about Suicide Squad is it's a huge list. It's, it's any criminal can be part of the Suicide Squad. All you got to do is inject a little bomb in them and say, hey, you work for me now. You don't listen to me, you know. Bada bing, bada boom, you're dead. And if you do listen to me, you get life sentence. You, your life sentence goes down a little bit. Um, so, like in Suicide Squad, like there are people getting, you know, like screw this, I'm gonna, you know, I'm getting out of here. All right, bam. Okay, replace a new one. So, from what I've understood and heard is, and the rumor is that it's gonna be completely rebooted. It's not even really? gonna be. A, it's gonna be a completely different. Yeah, it's gonna be like a completely different. Cat, maybe cast or not. Like Margot Robbie, I think is still going to be in there. I don't know if Will Smith is going to be in there, but like, I, I mean, Gunn can do it. I think he can do it, and I, and that's one thing I, I really want to see because the Suicide Squad movie was horrible. <laughs> that was a <laughs> horrible movie. It got nothing right. So, okay. would you say that that's a horrible movie because it wasn't like? It wasn't clear to the source material. It wasn't loyal to that. Or, like, that's would you say saying, that... I have no idea on the source material on that because I've read Suicide Squad and I went, what the heck are they doing? So it was just confusing like, in was, general like, to you. That's why I haven't covered it yet. Because it's just like... There's so many different I, things. There's so many... Well, the first thing is... I'm, I'm going to go on a tangent. First thing is, you had trailers. Mm -hmm. You had trailers that came out, certain clips... And in the whole movie, there were so many clips. I'm like, I was waiting to see, and I was like, wait a minute. That didn't show up. Wait, that didn't show up. Wait, that didn't show up. Oh, well, maybe they'll do an ultimate version. Yeah, we'll put ten more minutes in there. <laughs> wait. And then, like, it was like, a, like an extra scene of Joker, and I was like, that's it? <laughs> was that it? Was that the extra ten? Really? I bought the... Mm. See, and that's crazy, what? because... Like yeah, I mean, when it comes to source material, I would I have no idea to even begin with that. So like, that's something, and and that that probably could have helped them too because like they don't have the pressure of the fans saying you need to get this right. This was something that they could have done with Suicide Squad. They could have done whatever they wanted. And the problem is is that they did ex like the worst part about it. They the worst part to me in a movie is that you don't get to understand. Uh, the characters and and what they learn and everything and for and, and for will smith to be the one to pull the trigger on the bad guy at the very end made no sense to me when when what's his name the other guy the white guy like had beef with with i don't know it just none of it made sense to me like character development made no sense to me like the the plot in general just made no sense but here's the thing that i do have and you would mention it some hopes for in the future of the DCEU is James Gunn is a good director because he took a bunch of misfit comic book characters like the Guardians of the Galaxy and and turn it into almost a leading franchise in itself to be honest like he turned it into something that everybody now will know forever and what did he write everything in the beginning no he was not the lead writer in the first movie and i find that to be a better movie than the second one and you could you could tell that that's way more james gunn than the first one but he still had a clear decision when it came to uh creating something that we all really love now and you look at suicide squad suicide squad is pretty much the same as the guardians of the galaxy they're kind of like a bunch of misfits 
thrown together that nobody really likes and they're all a bunch of losers just like the guardians of the galaxy so i felt like he would be able to do a really really well like a good job but like i didn't know it was going to be a reboot like that that's news to me i don't know if that's a rumor or not but like that would be that i would go see it if that was the case if they're making a continuation i don't know how they could even save it like it does like the first one was so bad that i don't know how that they could make one that continues from that so like i'm conflicted like warner brothers as a company and dc together like has just sucked when it comes to like hiring and like doing pr and all of that but they give all of us a a little bit of hope and and then they crush our dreams in the end so i don't i don't know what's gonna happen like (laughs) and that's why i want to like finish all of this off with like talking about what do you think like what are some things that you are hoping for what are some things that you are excited for uh that dc is doing because they clearly are changing things up a little bit what do you think could fix everything or i mean what are you just in general really excited for like example james gunn i am looking forward to see if suicide squad could actually be made into something that's decent so be like please tell me what you think could be fixed here well i think what they could do and i um what they could do is, and um, who was it? I think uh, I was watching a comic story, and then uh, a comic uh, books explain comics explain they they kind of brought up like what they think they could, how they would fix it, and I think it's a kind of a genius move. And that is, you make the standalone movies. The reason why they're calling this the worlds of DC now, it's called we're still I'll still call it the DCEU, but it's called the worlds of DC is because they're gonna start doing okay, what does what movies are great, and Okay, so let's try this Aquaman movie. Did people like the Aquaman movie? Yes, they did great. Okay, let's that one we could link to to sometime later on. Um, they make uh, Suicide Squad, and it doesn't. It I'm hoping it does well, but let's say it doesn't do well. Okay, let's not link that to that universe. Uh-huh. You know, and that's what I'm hoping they'll 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 do. Um, but. We don't know. I mean, the one I'm going to say I'm excited for is, you guys can't tell, I mean, I'm a huge Green Lantern fan. Oh, is that what that like is? I didn't I didn't notice. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, but, uh, but uh, I mean, the fact that Jeff Johns is writing and directing, no, I think he's writing and producing. He, either way, he's doing something with it. I mean, <laughs> the guy, you know, he, he made Green Lantern popular. He knows what he's doing on that. And... I'm more excited for that. That's in 2020, I think it is. He said. Wow. There's nothing like concrete yet at the time, but like, that's the one I'm really excited for. And um, so, DC just needs to really feel their niche. They need to figure out what works, and if you know they can make references, so it's saying yeah, it's in the same, but don't like. Oh look, it's a it's a Superman it's a Batman movie with Superman in it. Or oh look, Shazam's in there. And apparently Superman was supposed to come in, which I mean hmm. that's happened in the comics. But I mean it's that eh. you're still kind of like saying, oh it's still relevant. Well, we don't know if it's really relevant now. I mean, but the, DC just needs to find what works, and if two movies work, link them up. If something else works, link them up. If they don't work, don't do anything with it. Cut it. Cut your loss. I mean, that that does sound really... I mean, it sounds like what they should have done in the beginning. It almost sounds like a formula that, that Marvel kind of had. Because, like, that's... Actually, that's not true. Because The Incredible Hulk was the second movie after Iron Man in 2008. And they they just kind of went for it because Iron Tony Stark was at the end of that movie. So, because uh, like other than that, in, Incredible Hulk is a movie that you could take out completely, and 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 be like it's it's not connected. Even though I actually didn't mind it that much, I, I actually enjoy that movie. Uh, but it's not my favorite. But it is one that you could take out completely because it has no ties except for that post credit scene where Tony Stark walks into the bar. But like it does, that does make sense. It, it, it seems like something that that has worked in the past uh, with Marvel by making movies and not connecting them in any way, um, other than Shield. Shield was the only connection uh, that any of them had because 
after the Incredible Hulk was, uh, well, Iron Man 2, and that's where S.H.I.E.L.D. was introduced for the second time. But then Thor, the S.H.I.E.L.D. had a pretty big presence there, but it didn't It didn't make it a whole movie. It didn't, like, connect everything. There were mentions, like you had said, that DC could do. Uh, they mentioned Tony Stark. They mentioned, they mentioned a couple different things to where it's, like, really small. But, like... That could really work. I, I I feel like that could fix their franchise because really it's just taking the time is is what I feel like ruined it for them. That doesn't mean that they can't take the time now. So I I don't know if that's what they're doing, but I, I agree with you. I, I feel like that would be a, a, a good first step at least. So, yeah. so having said that, this is my opinion. When it comes to... I mean, there's a lot of things that I do like already in the DC Extended Universe. But, like, there's a lot of things... There's even more things that bother me. And I feel like they just don't... I don't know. They just don't... They don't grab me when it comes to their main characters. And I, if they could just make good movies about our main characters... The characters that we all love. Like, make making a wonder woman movie was their best move that they could have ever made because now everyone loves her and no matter what if you if you even if you throw her into batman versus superman they're all going to be cheering for her and she was in there for only like seven minutes so like if they did that i feel like it would be really important i feel like making individual movies themselves would be great but to mix it to be a little bit different from what you're doing is that and, and I, I can already tell you that they're probably never going to do this. But, like, if they brought in the TV universe that, that they created on, on WB, not only would that, like, work because everyone already loves that universe, I feel like they would change the game completely because Marvel's has been super hesitant about doing it for them because that you got agents of shield you've got all the netflix tv shows and they they're still like nah we don't really want to bring them in yet but like you've got gotham you've got you've got flash arrow all of that and and a flash that we all freaking love i think he's the best flash but like if you if you brought if if warner brothers brought them in they would change hollywood history like all they need to do is just do it and like if it succeeds great like perfect if it doesn't the thing is is that they would make so much money off of that like even if it failed like they would make so much money to where it's like okay we have enough money now to try something different but like they are not doing that at all like not not even close everybody you remember when uh justice league came out even suicide squad came out and the flash was in there Everybody was so mad that they didn't use the television flash. Oh, yeah. And, like, it was just, like, it was right there. We were all waiting for it, and they chose it. And I have nothing against the flash now. I think he's pretty good. I, the Justice League flash, I think he's all right. But, like, we we have gotten – we've had the time to get to know the TV Barry Allen so well that, like, that's what all of us – I feel like a lot of us were expecting it, to be honest. And and I feel like that would be something that could change not only their franchise, but Hollywood in general. I mean, would you... I mean, that's that's probably a controversial topic in, in general. I, I feel like a lot of people m might not agree with me. But what, what are your opinions on bringing in the TV WB-verse into the movies? Huh. <laughs> well, first things first, have you seen... I, I'm going to just... Go off topic a quick second. Have you seen the little poster for the Elseworld uh, episode they're going to be doing? No. There's a thing. So there's a thing called Elseworld, and Elseworld stories are basically these, uh, like different universe stories. Right, like Red. And Sun. the Elseworld pitch, and the the Elseworld uh, episode they're doing. Oliver is the Flash. Oh yeah. And, and Barry Allen. Is, is Arrow. Is That's Arrow. Right. I did see that poster. And I'm like, ah, oh, okay. We'll see how this goes. That, and that I've, is kind I've of heard, different. I've, yeah, and I heard, like they said, like if, if the Elseworld story works with like the Superman stuff, like they're going to be making a Superman series now too, which I don't know. We'll see how that goes. Yeah. Uh, but like bringing the the, uh, the problem with the, – the only way you could bring the DC like 
TV universe into the cinematic universe is if you did a crisis. For those who don't know, when you do uh, DC, uh, a lot of times, like every 10 years, would do like a crisis of some sort. And one of them would be, the first one would be like a crisis of multiple Earths, which was like basically all of these multiverse, the multiverse is collapsing and like everyone's seeing everyone from different universes. Right. And so you could you could definitely do hey here's Smallville hey here's well I mean you could digit you could CGI uh, oh what, Christopher Reeves uh, you could have Brandon Rolfe pop up out of, uh, out of uh, the universe and of super, for Superman stuff I mean you could do a whole bunch of stuff on that and if you want to do that great but I mean to have like Flash and bring him in that'd be kind of hard. Like financially, because you had to think like you'd have to pay the guy a lot more. Yeah. Because now that he'd be going into the movies, I mean, you get paid top dollar for that, and then going into the film, then like you'd have to maintain that pay or that rate, you know, that that certain thing to that. So I could see why they didn't really want to do that, but I mean, they sh- kind of should have because they made a well-developed <laughs> character or. In my opinion, they shouldn't even have made like if the movie, if the TV series was doing great, they shouldn't have done a Flash movie. I'm mm-hmm. actually saying this, yeah, they shouldn't make a Flash movie with a different character. They should have got the guy in there. So yes, they should have had. If if they were gonna use the Flash, you know, in the movies, they should have used the Flash character from CW. It'd have been fantastic, but. I don't know why they did it now. And it's true. I mean, we're I mean, we're talking about us trying to change Warner Brothers' minds. I mean, that we're not living in reality right now. So like, I get that the fact that there are contracts that actors have to have when it comes to the WB compared to like film stuff. But just to humor us and everything. First off, I think that that crisis idea that you have, I feel like that that would be so sick because the thing is, is, Sony is doing something right now with the Spider-Man verse, with the Spider Verse, uh, to where I I don't know if everyone's gonna be able, like the general public in ge- in general, I don't think they're gonna get it. I I feel like the multiverse that that Marvel is hinting at is a huge gamble that the general public and the general public is where all of their money is coming from. Like us as fans, like yeah, we'll go see it a couple times, but like. Like, the general public is where all the money is. And for them to throw in a multiverse or, or a microverse or whatever it is, the, the like, it would go over their heads. But, like, Warner Brothers could pull it off because they have all of those different avenues. They have... I mean, they've already, they've already done it in... There's an awesome episode in The Flash where uh, he meets Wally West. And, like, it was, it was perfect. Like, it was, like... I don't know, like, I totally got it. My wife totally got it, but and but we're super fans, you know? Like, And the general public loved that episode. That was one of their favorite ones from that season. So it's like, if if any if anyone could do it, more, Warner Brothers could do it perfectly. And I'm really, I'm, this is just my own personal biases. I feel like a lot of people are not going to start getting what, what these produce, like, these movie studios are going to be doing in the future. I hope so. I hope they can pull it off. But, like, for Warner Brothers to do like a whole like crisis, that would be so cool. And you should write Warner Brothers. I don't know. You should call them. <laughs> well, I mean, the thing about Crisis on Infinite Earths um, is it's it was a it's a it was a <clears throat> golden age comic. So it's really like I haven't even right. fin- like I finished. I got to a certain point, but it's like it, this is when DC had like a really hard time. The, the reason why they would do the crisis is to fix continuity. So something that they do all these things and nothing would connect and they're like, oh, let's do a crisis and fix it. And then another 10 years going, oh, let's do another crisis and fix it because they couldn't keep on doing it. Right. But like it, that could work. It, it'd be awesome if they did it. I mean, I, from what I heard on rumors now that like there is a small little set for this Elseworld stuff, which means like possibly Smallville could come back. I, I love the Smallville TV show. That yeah. was my favorite TV show. I have yes. all I own all ten seasons. Love That's that how show. big of a fan I am of it. I love Tom I love Tom as 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 Clark Kent. He made me really care about Clark Kent. Not as Superman, he made me care about Clark Kent. Um but I mean 
it's it's got to be done well, and it's got to be written well. And I mean, with Warner's track, Warner Brothers track record with the movies right now, not really be confident about it. But I don't know. I mean, it depends on who writes it and stuff. So, having said all of this stuff. Hopefully, uh, Warner Brothers producers and executives are watching this show right now, and they uh, take these ideas because we've got some great stuff. I feel like an Infinite on Crisis, Crisis on Infinite Earth would be a great way to do it because not only is it history that could be made, but it's DC's history. They've done it before in the past in their comic books, and yes, maybe they've done it to fix continuity, but isn't that what they would be doing in the movie verse? You know. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. There's a lot that could be said uh, from all of this. The number one thing I think we can take away from this is that so far we are not happy with the DC Extended Universe, but we are excited for what's to come, especially Shazam and Aquaman. Aquaman coming out in December. I'm pretty stoked for that because I'm I'm actually a pretty big Aquaman fan. So, and not to mention Shazam is going to just change the game for for DC. There's a lot of really cool things that I think are going to be happening. And we're just all going to have to stay tuned for all of that. So, I just want to say thank you so much for coming on to the show today and talk about this. Let's do this after we watch Shazam and Aquaman and see what where DC will go f- from here and see if we even like those movies because i think those will change the game yeah definitely i'll definitely yeah we'll definitely be down for that so tell us where you tell tell anybody who's watching or listening to this where can they find you on youtube how how can they get a hold of you or anything of the like well you can follow me on my my uh channel it's called comic man jake uh all one word uh and uh uh, if you want to follow me on any other social media platform, I'm on Twitter, I'm on uh, I, Facebook and uh, Instagram. Same thing, same handle, Comic Man Jake. Uh, and uh, I mean, I do videos Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Uh, like I said before, Mondays are always the comic movie equations. Um, Wednesdays are usually some sort of comic review uh, along with the poll list, which is like, you know, the newest comics coming out. And then uh, Fridays are usually the you know whatever i feel like freedom friday basically meaning it could be a top five it could be a writer you know uh bio it could be you know news that's coming out it's really like up in the air on fridays so just be aware of that fridays is always a freebie day but uh yeah follow me on that and uh yeah awesome and I mean, those of you who are not familiar or those of you who are familiar, my favorite thing about his channel is that he is consistent. You will be getting a movie, a video on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. No doubt. No doubt about it. So tune in, subscribe to his channel, and thank you guys so much for tuning in here. If you haven't already, go check out our podcast because all of our episodes on Beside the Point here are actually a Beside the Point podcast. So if you want to listen to us at work or in the car uh, instead of just looking at my ugly mug, you can go check us out on Anchor FM and any other way that you can look uh, listen to podcasts, that being uh, Spotify, iTunes, you name it, we are definitely there. So check us out there, and if you haven't already, subscribe to our YouTube channel and tell us what you like. Tell us what you love seeing on our channel or tell us some things that you would like to see. We love being able to communicate with you and that's definitely what me and comic man jake have been doing so thank you guys so much tuning in to our show here today and until next time we'll see you again Dreamers of dreams. <laughs>